Hello everybody. So finally I managed to have some time for making some video for the YouTube uh, because my last video was was made around one month ago and yeah this is not really good because uh, I have a plan for making one video per week or at least one video per two weeks. But now I run into the situation which which I need to spend a lot of my time and also my focus uh, to my batteries. And yeah, I had a lot of work and also I need to make a lot of testings uh, on my batteries. And now really quick, I will show you on what batteries I was working. So at this moment, I work on two different battery types, uh, which one type is over here. So here I have some zinc aldin uh, battery cell and this one I develop for some company. So on this one, I need to make a lot of modifications uh, and also a lot of testings, which takes me quite a lot of time. Then the next battery, which I also work on is this one. So this is my battery and this battery cell uses my hyperflow battery technology, which means that this one is how to say some simplified version of my hyperflow battery and the idea behind of making this new cell uh, is uh, to simplify everything and uh, to make a battery which is really cheap robust flexible and also really really safe because this cell you can penetrate or damage in any way and the cell will not catch any fire or will not explode then the cell is also flexible, which means that you can upgrade the cell or the battery uh, only by replacing the old electrolyte with the new electrolyte. And for example, in this case, with the new upgrade, you can gain more capacity and cycle life. And for the last, what is also really important is that the cells and later the batteries uh, will be cheap as possible. And this I want to make with my minimal cell design. But on another hand, to make this cell really robust, safe and cheap, I also need to sacrifice the performance of the battery. Because right now this cell have some reduction in the capacity, which means that right now the capacity of this one is in the region of 50 uh, watt hours per kilogram. But the technology is upgrading all the time. And now back to the video. So in my last video, I make this graphite conductive club, which is really easy and also really cheap to make. And in case that you want to see how I make this one, then the link to the video will be in the video description. But the point of making some another video on this conductive club is to show you uh, how will this one perform in some battery. So actually, I use this conductive cloth like a host material in some zinc aldin battery. And yeah, yeah, I know that some graphite based materials in some zinc aldin batteries are not really optimal because it's way better if you use some activated carbon materials like activated carbon powder or activated carbon felt because the activated carbon materials have many, many pores and also really, really large surface area. And for this reason, the activated carbon material can absorb much more iodine like the graphite materials. But because I already make a lot of testing on zinc iodine batteries, for this reason, I already have some idea how some zinc iodine battery need to perform. And for this reason, I had some interest to see how this graphite uh, conductive cloth will perform like a host material in some zinc iodine battery. And just in case for the comparison, I also test this material, which is this pan based graphitic carbon felt. So this one, I uh, also try like a host material uh, in the zinc iodine battery. So this pan based graffiti carbon felt, you can find really easily on eBay or Amazon and have some really nice conductivity and also really nice chemical resistance. Um, this homemade conductive club have some moderated conductivity uh, and also the chemical resistance will depend 
what type of binder you will use. But in terms of the price, uh, you need to spend around $20 for 10 by 10 centimeter piece with a thickness of 3 millimeters. But for making this sheet of conductive cloth, I need to spend around 3, uh, three euros. Which is actually for some DIY makers really, really good. Before I will show you the test results which I get with this material, I will also show you I will also show you the test cell which was used in the testing. And over here is my zinc iodin test cell, which for the host material uses this conductive cloth. And you can see that uh, the cell I put into this tic tac box. Uh, this is because the tic tac box will reduce the drying out of the electrolyte. And for this reason, uh, I'm able to test the cell for much longer time. Now I will put apart. So here I have the housing and over here I have some spacer, uh, some 3D printed spacer which compress the anode and the cathode really tight together. So here I have the zinc, which is the negative electrode. Here I have this uh, positive current collector, which is made from graphol. So the zinc is the surface of the zinc. Uh, then for the separator, actually I use the same material which was made this conductive club. So the separator is made from some uh, bamboo fiber uh, cloth and yeah, really nice. And for the house material, I use this. The same cell I also make when I test this pan based graphitic carbon felt. The same size, the same amount of the electrolytes and so on. The only difference was the host material because in one cell I use this one and in another test cell I use this pound based graphitic carbon pellet. And now let's see what was the performance when I used this homemade conductive cloth in some zinc iodine test cell. Here we have some graph of the voltage and the current. And over here is the discharge curve of this zinc iodine test cell which uses this homemade uh, conductive cloth. And the specific capacity is in the region of 31 to 33 uh, milliamp hours per gram. And here we have the cycles. I make 100 cycles with this test cell. And here for the last you can also see the charge discharge efficiency and also the energy efficiency. So the zinc iodine test cell which uses this homemade conductive cloth like a host material have the energy efficiency of 81% and the charge discharge efficiency of 98% which is actually really really good. And now for the comparison here are the test results with this pan based graphitic carbon felt. Over here we have the voltage and the current curve, the discharge curve, so over here you can see uh, that the specific capacity is almost the same like by test cell which uses homemade conductive cloth. And for the last the charge discharge efficiency and also the energy efficiency. So the pan based graffiti carmofed have the energy efficiency of around 67% and the charge discharge efficiency of 92%. So guys, this video was made in case if some people want to have some interest to see how this homemade conductive cloth will perform in some battery. So for now, that's it and we see us in the next video. Bye.